What up, you guys? It's your girl, Zena. It's your girl, Riri. And, and welcome, welcome back, back to Heavenly Curls. So what we'll be doing in today's video, do you? In today's video, we're going to be doing talking about our life lessons that we learn from family members, friends, grandparents, and uncle. uncle. So this, yeah. So this video is actually was um, requested by yeah. someone. I hope I pronounce her name correct. If you're yeah. watching this, you asked for this video. I hope that you know it was it. It will be helpful. So she said, "Great work. Can you ladies do a video sometime something about?" what life lessons slash tips you all have learned so far about adulthood she said they were adults and i'm like am i even an adult yet? <laughs> yes yeah <laughs> oh my God. that's my niece <laughs> maybe lessons that have been passed on from parents grandparents friends families etc previous employers etc so thank you for the request her name is kamiko jade yeah, chemical yeah. jade. Yeah. Right. Shout out and to you, girl. Yeah, shout out to you. She requested this video, so we thought it'd be cool to do it. Cause I mean, we just need to talk. We'd like to talk. <laughs> so if you want to see that video, then keep, keep on, on watching. watching. Let's get into it. Right. So no. let's get to the juicy stuff. So one of the first life lessons that we learn is no sex before marriage. I feel like if this was in it, like it was like into us. Yeah, like, I feel like when I. <laughs> Like yeah, when I born, I was like, "Mama, I like, mm -mm, no boys until you got married, girl." Yeah. Like I have been preached to not have sex before marriage for as long as I could think. Yeah. So to me, I my mother never really ingrained it in my mind, but it was understood because everybody in my life ingrained it in my mind. Not yeah. Because my, <laughs> my environment, it was more or less like that is that is understood, oh, okay. right? And you're not going around See, boys. You're not supposed to be, you know doing anything that mm -hmm. you're not supposed to be doing right but um i think the concept of it is when i got older like teenage mm -hmm. years then i got to understand why mm -hmm. because they always heard like about that, it yeah, like they always but you never understand yeah. why like, like you know i i'm a teenager i need to express myself all these hormones just <laughs> building up you know i am a person so i am a sexual human being so why could i not mm -hmm. but is only until mm -hmm. my aunt Abby explained it to me and she told me something very important. She said, um, sex is only between a husband and a wife and it's a it's more than just a union, it's a covenant between God. Right? So in case you girls and guys don't know, for those out there, when you do have sex for the first time, you know it's a blood covenant. Yeah. Right? So it's spiritually, it, mentally, emotionally and physically connected. Yeah. Right. So on that note, it, it made me understand that, you know, it's a deeper connection, a deeper bonding between you and your partner. So when I understood why, then I was like, well, definitely I'm going to save that time for me and my husband. And it worked out because, you know, we, we bond, we yeah. got along really well. And the good thing about it too is when you have, you and a person, you know, being your first or whatnot, it, you don't have no complication. Yeah. It's not like, oh, so you sleep with this no. person, or you was with that person, and that, person, one, and that one, one was better, or anything. You don't have nothing to compare it to. It don't be complicated so it, at it, all. It's just like, <laughs> yeah. Simple, and for so people who are thinking that, you know, like. Bad and we crazy. No, people oh. who are thinking that, you know, because you're going into marriage and you have no clue about, you know, sex. That you're going to just go and screw it up. That is not true, right? Because the now lies. you can educate yourself, right? It's have sexual education. So you can educate yourself and you can find out about yourself mm -hmm. and read and whatnot. So don't make people feel, or people who might point fingers at you, don't make them. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> that is difficult and you go and be real lame and boring. That is not true. You could learn. Just like how you learn to do other things, okay? Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Nobody so. Moving on, Moving on. We see we on that for a little too long. Uh, we also learned that boys only want one thing. Like, I oh, have, yeah. like my mother ingrained that in me as well. Like, she used to always say, that, boys only want one thing. Yeah. Talk, like, time primary school, I'm talking to a boy on the home phone. Because <laughs> back then, we had a home phone. She used to be like, boys only want one thing. You know, like, so she literally used to be shouting that in yes, the background. Yeah, the boys, yeah. I can't even talk to boys on the phone. Oh. I only started talking to boys on the phone, like, probably, I would say, in high school, like, form four, form five. 
And even if I were to talk to a boy, my mother be like, who is that? That better not be a boy. And who was his name? And where he from? And I just like chill. It's just when I'm a guy friend from school, you know, it's like we normal, we cool. Yeah. And we didn't have social media as big as now. So which make it okay. Because I remember being on Facebook, it was like a, like a real big thing. <laughs> so, Facebook was the thing. Yeah. Everybody was on Facebook in my school except for me. Yeah, I, I didn't get to be on Facebook until I reached like um, form 4, form 5. Yeah. Same here. Yeah. Because my mother swear that somebody was going to kidnap me. <laughs> <laughs> like, when I take my picture and kidnap me. But yeah. it is serious because if, you're, happen, yeah, cause if you're young people. and you don't know what you're doing, you could meet yeah. up with some crazy people, people on Facebook, right? Yeah. But that's true. Boys, some boys mostly want one thing and you have to be you not know all boys huh? wise not all some boys. boys will definitely wait yeah some no, some you gotta get you gotta watch all we can do is break you gotta watch <laughs> so we also learn that friends will carry you and not bring you back no person which is a back. normal saying everybody know but I never yeah. experienced anybody carrying me because I don't really trust people. Nobody can carry me away and remember me. See, now I had a friend that encouraged you to do something wrong, and you're just like, okay, let let me go. Let me do this. Let me go and bust a line, take a little drink, you know, have some fun. Something free that you should note about me is that I was the hardest person to convince to do anything at any point in time. You could not make me do anything that my mother said I was wrong. <laughs> You're a real good child, though. <laughs> <laughs> I so that's why I never experienced that. Like nobody never carried me anywhere and bring me back. Okay, like, well, to I never like. Yeah. I totally different from Dina. Yeah, she. I I was probably like when I was growing up, I would just want to follow my cousins and follow some of my friends from primary school. So I probably definitely did some things that my friends carry and didn't bring me back, and I got in trouble for. But we won't discuss that. So it's as I grow older and I got to learn about myself and my personality and realize that, you know, you want to be a positive person and you want to be a light in darkness. Yeah. Then I get to realize that, you know, doing the right thing is a good thing. Sometimes you well children just do bad things because they want to just go and be in the crowd. They want to be labeled as churchy or um yeah. goody two shoes that like like those people is considered not cool, right? But now you're realizing to do good things is it's really is cool. It's really good. It's really good. Is it weird that I used to enjoy being that person when I used to go to school it's so well? I but not like you in primary school. <laughs> The only thing is that people actually used to like so it's just weird. I used to I, I used to enjoy being that person like different no yeah but i think the reason why um i changed in high school like being besides being safe my mother oh yeah fun fact if you ever get felt with a greeter Woo-hoo. well girl <laughs> <Trinidad news. laughs> this this is why i probably too you know the way i am and beside my, all my aunts on my mother's side and beside my grandmother mm-hmm. and 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 avi girl my mother, she don't play. Like, that greater, like, turn my life right around. <laughs> so if I get, if I get pals with a greater, this is the result. This yeah. is the end result. <laughs> my, my goal in, like, life when I was, like, in primary school and secondary school, and it's, like, I just wanted to make people mm-hmm. proud and people to like me. So right. I would, like, be good for the teachers and for my mother. So just that I would just be okay. Well, that, that's, that's the only mama. reason why yeah. I was like good. The only th- bad thing I probably could remember doing in secondary school is making a huge, huge bad decision in this in a particular day. <laughs> we won't talk about the past. We won't talk about that. And um, but I won't re- say regret it. It's just that I wish that you know that I didn't mm. even bother. I think the worst thing I ever probably do in high school was just go a dollar party that I was throwing from a friend and then the <laughs> guide and counselor like break the party and I was like, what? You, you never had a dollar party and yeah, you paid the dollar? Uh, no, uh, I didn't want to pay. Uh, <laughs> and they was like, oh yeah, you with her. Okay, cool. And then they was just playing music and everybody was standing up there like, sup. And then the guidance counselor just like, bust open the door and thing and everybody like scattering like rats in the, in the room and she was Yay. like you inside here yeah? come here and put me on it's like you're not supposed to be inside here you're better than that yeah. i was like miss like just my, it's just my friend but day i just come here to see what a dollar party but yeah. curiosity to the next day second thing i was gonna say about that i did in secondary school 
is that for some reason my friends didn't like assembly. <gasps> like yeah, wait, what? assembly, bad <laughs> child. Like, and I was so confused because I used to like to sing the anthem. <laughs> Dina, who would like to stand up for the national anthem and pledge? I mean, yeah, we love the country, but... I used to just like to sing the anthem now because they used to sing it on the wrong key and I used to like to sing it on the right key. Anyhow, and I used to always like be excited because I used to be in front of my line. I used to always go early so I could be first. <laughs> Oh my gosh. You right? would be that one annoying kid. <laughs> Wait, so I used to always go in front of guys. So apparently my friends didn't like assembly and I like assembly. So all of them was like, yeah, let me go in the bathroom and hide. And I was like, no. Oh, that we the bathroom smells stinky. I don't know why we go in the bathroom. But I was like, this is not a good idea. We will get catch. It's like, no, 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 we won't get catch. And I was like, okay, cool, whatever, whatever. And we went and we get catch and we end up having to do the, and the, nash, the assembly in the toilet with the vice principal and then she was very disappointed in me specifically because i don't ever get in trouble and she's like dina i was not expecting this from you i never do nothing wrong again lex lex ever get in trouble in um lower six for staying upstairs to finish eia and the yeah one of the dean like suspend him for just staying up for not coming in assembly yeah that was how serious i still be to leave in my textbook yeah i didn't like the whole heavy bag i mean i used to do school work but like there wasn't getting me to do that book. Trust yeah, me. I get it to the shirt for the bringing out textbook. There wasn't getting me to do that book. <laughs> to be me. Okay. So moving on quickly. We're moving on. So the next stop, um, life lesson that we learned was to be independent and hardworking. Yeah. So anything that you want in life, my mommy and well, my grandmother, first of all, they told me to work hard. You don't depend on other people to do it for you. You go to school, get education, do a skill, whatever you like, and you work hard and, you know, do whatever makes you comfortable. But make your own money and have a mind of your own. And don't depend on no one to yeah. do that for Cause, you. Because man, trust me. But then we read <laughs> our Bible. Yeah. And then we learn that a wife must learn to be submissive to her husband. That doesn't mean... That you still can be hardworking yeah. and independent, but at the same time, I'll be submissive. Yes. And when you're hardworking, you also um, be ab ambitious. So when you're ambitious now, you're goal-oriented mm -hmm. and you know what you want and you you focus more about life. So you won't just be like a headless chicken, like, oh, what I should do now? You know, you you have a goal to work towards. Yeah. yeah. So the next, so the next tip is what? Put Christ first. We learned that from since, you know, BBS. You know, yeah. We used to like BBS. You know? Yeah. We don't know why we was playing Christ first when we just played <laughs> <laughs> It wasn't forced on us. We didn't us. Say this. No, we yeah. used to enjoy these things. We yeah. don't understand. This was fun for us. Like, going BBS. It's still so fun right like, now since so we know cool. it personally. Yeah. So it's like we learned from like really, really young to put Christ first. And without him, life is just like nothing. Like, yeah. the point of living, you know? Everything that you do always what I learned this recently, mm. you know, from where you spent time anything that you do, ask yourself, is this glorifying him? God, yeah. Is giving him glory? Is mm. it if it's not then what are you doing it for? True. For who? True. For the neighbor? For your boyfriend. <laughs> for <your husband>? mm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, it's for real, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so that was one of the first the fun of the things that was really that we mm. learned. Yeah. And when you put Christ for this, remember he will mm. never put you last. He will always, you know, like we say this all see time. you through right, right <laughs> to the end. And I know that for sure. Like being a teenager, putting Christ first, even in my schooling and going to university, obviously you'll go through some ups and downs. But at the same time, he will make you successful in the end. Preach. Amen. So, um, the next thing is to keep your circle small. Girl. There's my, there's my circle right here. My circle right here. Like my hands are going around my circle. <laughs> it's so small. It's there. Keep your circle small because people just not nice, you know, sometimes. It's just yeah. like, I don't go out for a living. I go out <laughs> friends every day because it's just like, yeah. I, I don't, nice. okay, I can understand like teenagers wanting to have friends and be popular and stuff but like when you go into adult adulthood. stage it's just like nah i can't do this anymore mm -hmm. i just need to have a good few friends and that is it like the rest of other friends like bye-bye mm -hmm. 
I'm mean, not saying good friends, guys. I mean genuine friends. Friends that have your back and willing to support you in good times and bad times. They're willing to pray for you. I'm willing to pray for you and, you know, give you good advice. Not bad advice, but good advice. Yeah. So, Dina being one of them, and then I have my aunts and, you know, some of my friends from church and cousins and whatnot. So, keep your circle small. It's always good. Yeah. Because not everybody going to like you, and you have to learn that from... No, and everybody that smile is your friend. It's your friend. No, <laughs> they are so not. True. Yeah. So yeah. just be careful, <laughs> and you will learn that, especially in high school. Yeah. Yeah, and also don't. So as we discussed before, that I was just always like I would say that I was a people pleaser. Like I wanted people yeah. to like me. Like I used to do this thing. Where I used to be like. I'm Dina. Everybody likes me. <laughs> like literally, I used to just walk up to people and do that because I used to assume that everybody what? I yeah everybody I know liked me, and that's how I felt. Like everybody genuinely liked me because I was a people pleaser. Like, I could pop your bubble. <laughs> Pop. No, I don't know, like then, like when I used to go to primary school and etc. Oh, okay, okay, okay. School, I used to think like I want to please teachers, parents, everybody. Like I was a people pleaser, and as I grew older. Yeah. Like, I don't really care what nobody thinks. <laughs> yeah, true. I just, the only person I out yet to please is the Father, which is in heaven. True. Amen. <laughs> and now, I'm happy as ever. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I think I learned that at a young age, because my mother used to be like, you don't have to change who you are for anybody else. Yeah. You have to love yourself first, and when you love yourself first, you can love anybody. Yeah. I so, didn't like change myself for anybody. It's just that mm -hmm. I just wanted everybody to be me. happy or do things that you yeah. know, to make them feel comfortable. Yeah. But you do you do anything to make me feel comfortable? Yes, I give she water. <laughs> <laughs> so every time I come by dinner, it's just water. I have to keep she hydrated people. Right. Moving on quickly. We so out of time. oh. Next one, self love. Love yourself first. Like we were saying before, you know, to not be a people pleaser, we have to love ourselves first. And this could only come by, you know, well, for me, it le I learned it through being, well, being safe and then to being around good people. Yeah. Yeah. Same. Because sometimes you could pick out like the faults or the flaws in yourself, but having good friends and, you know, having a good support system, they'd be like, Great. Girl. Okay, you make a mistake, but that is okay. There's not an end of the world. Hear what? You're going to pick yourself up, dust your shoes, and start all over again. That's and love happens. yourself. Mm -hmm. So, and it goes a long way. Because when you love yourself, nobody can tell you nothing. Yeah. Um, no. When it comes to loving yourself, oh, honestly, it's just, for me, it's just Christ. That's the only how I learn. Because he loved me. So much, yeah. I'd be like, wow, okay, I gotta love myself too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and uh, uh, other thing is that the reason why people ask me, so how come you never had a boyfriend um, until from one to upper six? And I was like, yeah, because I love myself. Mm -hmm. I love my own company. I don't need a man to tell me I'm looking good. I don't need a man to tell me that I'm all that. I know I'm all that. <laughs> okay, just being extra, yeah. but. <laughs> That's the whole it. point is, I didn't need somebody approval to be like, Ray, you're looking good, good today. Ray, you're all smart. Ray, you're here looking. She already know yeah. everything. I, I, I embrace it already. I embrace it. And I didn't do it in a boastful way. I do it in a humble way, of course. Humble way. Yeah. Yeah. Um, when it came to boys, I just, I don't even know why I wanted a boyfriend to try to Really? Yeah. I didn't have a reason. I, I, honestly, I was with her until I started university. That was one thing I was probably influenced by. Like, nobody could influence me, you know, but because other people probably had, I yeah. probably thought that I needed one. So that is a... Uh, I probably was influenced by that. Influence, yeah. But I didn't really notice until just now. Yeah. So, one of the life lessons that... Well, one of the life lessons that I learned in marriage was to compromise. Compromise not meaning in like a bad way, but compromise meaning in a good way. Like obviously you're going to learn about your partner, you're going to learn different things, things that, that you don't even are accustomed to, but you have to compromise. You have to meet them halfway. And it is challenging, I will admit, but at the same time, you know, it's the understanding that the both of you have to have. And on that note, the other thing was to put Jesus first. You remember the triangle mm -hmm. would go on top and then 
you and your husband blue so putting jesus first together that was like the main thing because once you have that in your relationship he at the center trust me it will be easier to you know solve some problems and to get through marriage life a much easier so guys yeah. we hope that these life lesson was helpful we know we could be a little extra when we're explaining some things and we talk plenty <laughs> and we do talk plenty but you know these these are good things that we have to pass on to the other generation yeah, so we hope that you guys enjoyed it yes. and thank you guys for so watching. watching don't, don't forget, forget to like comment and subscribe bye, bye.